Do the San Francisco 49ers still have some big moves up their sleeves following the 2024 NFL Draft? We're talking about that on today's San Francisco 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm Jay Senior. As always, no matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making our show a part of your day. And a reason that we're having this conversation is that when you look ahead, yes, it's early May, approaching mid-May. San Francisco right now has $6 million in cap space, but come June 1st, after the release of Eric Armstead, the Niners will have an additional $18 million in cap space coming their way. So could big moves be happening on the horizon? Before we dive into all of that, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Roan, for making today's 49ers report possible. You can get 20% off on the best men's gear at roan.com slash chat sports. Use the code chat sports to get that 20% off. Why I love their clothing, and I'm wearing their commuter dress shirt here today. It's high quality. It's breathable, stretchable. The fabric also very durable. No need to go to the dry cleaner because of their wrinkle release technology. Also, anti-odor technology. You never want to hang out with somebody or, shoot, go out on a date with somebody who's stinking up the joint. You don't have to worry about that when you're wearing some Roan gear. And they have everything that you need for your wardrobe, from dress shirts to polos, pants and shorts. You look at what I'm wearing on the show, and then you look at what these fellas are wearing here on your screen Everything is high quality, and you can use it in a variety of different instances from the golf course to the office, getting some drinks with your friends, out on a date, hanging with some family members. You just want to look good, feel good, because as you know, the real ones who tune into the program, that is the motto right there. You know it's also the motto? Getting 20% off your order, roan.com slash chat sports. We're going to put that link down below in the show notes as well as in the description of this video. We appreciate Roan for being a longtime supporter of everything that we do here at Chat Sports and on the 49ers report. So to reset, right now San Francisco has $18 million in cap space that is going to coming their way, going to be coming their way, excuse me, June 1st. And that's after the release of Eric Armstead. Sometimes the NFL puts these types of rules in place so that San Francisco can't really manipulate the cap and make the salary cap seem fake to everybody out there. For instance, they release Eric Armstead going into free agency, and then they get that $18 million. It gives them somewhat of an unfair advantage. But if you make the team wait then they don't have that money at their disposal, and it's not a way to, quote-unquote, beat the system. So San Francisco right now has $6.3 million exactly. And what moves could the Niners have in store as you look ahead, as we get closer and closer to the start of training camp at the end of July? And this Niners roster still has some question marks. They still have some holes that they could fulfill. So let's go position by position here. If the Niners wanted to go the free agency route, and we'll talk trade stuff a little bit later, what are those holes on this Niners roster? As I've said, I think tight end two is a little bit of a problem. George Kittle, best tight end in the National Football League in 2023, his first 1,000-yard season since 2019. But your backups as of right now are Cam Latu and Brain Willis. And then you have Eric Saubert from the Houston Texans, but he's a journeyman tight end for a reason. If the Niners wanted to go the tight end route, they're not going to spend a lot of money on that position. The likes of Logan Thomas available, Robert Tunyon, Jimmy Graham, Trevon Wesco, Jeff Schwaim, Mercedes Lewis, Nick Vanette, Bryson Hopkins, and then Niner legend Ross Dwelly. Could the Niners bring back Ross Dwelly? Charlie Warner got a pretty fat deal in NFL free agency. They could opt for the familiarity route and just go with the security option in Ross Dwelly. They tried to land a player like Brock Wright in taking him away from the Detroit Lions. Sign him to that offer sheet, and then the Lions match because they realized behind Sam Laporta, he's a very valuable tight end. But that tells a story right there that the Niners are not confident in Latou, in Braden Willis to back up George Kittle. But you look at that list of tight ends, there are really only one, maybe two players that you would be interested in bringing in, and they're not going to cost all that much money. 
A lot of Niner fans have voiced their support behind signing Robert Tunyon. He could be that blocking type of tight end. I'd just like to see what the Niners could do with more 12 personnel, more two tight end sets, where that second pass catcher next to George Kittle is actually a threat to catch the football. Ross Dwelly, Charlie Warner, they really haven't been that. All right, so you can cross off tight end because with that much cap space, it's not like you're going to devote a lot of your financial resources to that position. How about offensive tackle? Still a need if you want to bring in competition for Colton McKevitts. Can Dominic Pooney do that? Yeah, he might be able to do that. But I think he might be an interior offensive lineman at the next level. The offensive tackles, still free in free agency. Donovan Smith, A.J. Jackson, but the Rams assigned a second-round tender. David Bakhtiari, excellent player when healthy, but the last few years, not just last couple of years, the last few since signing that lofty contract extension, he's been hurt so much, and he's a left tackle. DJ Humphreys, former first-round pick, but there's a reason why he was trying out for teams last year. He could play outside, he could play inside. DJ Humphreys, probably not. Jason Peters continues his probable Hall of Fame career, but is probably a guard at this standpoint, but can play Offensive tackle if you need him to. He's a long ways from being that Hall of Fame tackle that he was for a really long time for the Buffalo Bills and Philadelphia Eagles. Charles Leno, he's just simply not that good. Jerron Christian, Chris Hubbard, Billy Turner, Cameron Irving, Dwayne Brown, Riley Reef, Connor McDermott. Rounding out the list of the top available free agent offensive tackles. On that list, Donovan Smith is probably the player that moves the needle but it doesn't move the needle all that much. It's probably a backup option. And honestly, at that point, Colton McKivitz might be better. At the guard position, Don Reisner has been a successful player in the NFL for a really long time. He at least brings in some competition, but you drafted Pooney, you drafted Jarrett Kingston, and you brought back John Feliciano. Other players, Phil Haynes, Halapudi Vadi Vaitai, Greg Van Roten, Mark Lewinsky, Justin Pugh, Tyree Phillips, Trey Turner, Pat Elflin, Wyatt Davis, and Chris Reed, and then Justin McRae, Matt Feeler, and DJ Fluker again can play tackle. He can play on the inside. On that list, the list of guards, probably better than the list of tackles, and it gives you better depth along the offensive line, but nobody that really drastically improves your football team. Which brings us to safety. A couple of interesting options there. Justin Simmons, and Eddie Jackson, cream of the crop. That next phase, Marcus May, Micah Hyde, Quandre Diggs, Jamal Adams. San Francisco has, quote, been in touch with Jamal Adams, according to the Seattle Times. And then there's a further drop-off after that. Tracy Walker, J. Ron Curse, Adrian Phillips, Tishon Gibson, Kareem Jackson, Terrell Edmonds, Keanu Neal, Rudy Ford, Ryan Neal, Adrian Amos, or Amos, excuse me, and John Johnson. Justin Simmons is the player that would be a terrific pickup for San Francisco. He's a four-time second-team All-Pro. The Niners want a safety who can be a center field ball hawk. They've looked into Simmons earlier on throughout this offseason, according to Mike Silver. And if they're looking for that center field ball hawking safety who can play deep against the pass and thrive in that area, Justin Simmons is that. He's played in a variety of defenses, and for great defensive coordinators, including one, Vic Fangio, who was the D.C. under Jim Harbaugh with the Niners. And Justin Simmons is not going to break the bank by any means because he's going to turn 31 years old in November if a team was really interested in him. He'd be more sought after. Still available in free agency here in May. And then you look at this Niners roster right now. Talano Hufonga coming off the torn ACL. You drafted Malik Mustafa, but he is a rookie. You haven't brought back to Sean Gibson. Jair Brown, I like his future as a player in this league. He's a young stud. But bringing in Justin Simmons doesn't really curtail his depth at all. If anything, you can play Simmons, Brown, and then Hufonga can kind of be that nickel safety if you really want. And another play on that list is Eddie Jackson, who, again, older, aging, 
injury concerns over the last couple of years, but was an All-Pro, first-team All-Pro back in 2018. A good 2019, last couple of years he's been banged up, but can he have a resurgence late in his career, kind of like a Deshaun Gibson has? That's the player that I would look at in free agency the most, Justin Simmons, and then Eddie Jackson after that. If the move is not external for San Francisco, what could it be? Well, there are a couple of players on this roster who are due for contract extensions. That money could be allocated to Brandon Ayuk. And when it comes the Niners' way June 1st, maybe the contract talks begin to heat up at that point. Outside of Brandon Ayuk, the Amador Lenore up for a contract extension. So too is Talano Hufanga, Jarvarius Ward, Fred Warner, and Brock Purdy. Although I don't think that happens until next year. But if the Niners want to surprise everybody and get ahead of the ball and get him at good value, because if he plays in 2024, like he did in 2023, he could cost $50 million compared to now, which could be about $40 million. So there's that. And then lastly, could San Francisco trade for somebody? The top NFL trade candidates out there as far as having name value and impact. Patrick Sertan, we've talked about him on the show. Marshawn Lattimore of the New Orleans Saints. Those trade rumors picking up once again. And let me throw this name out there. Trey Hendrickson. Yes, you signed Leonard Floyd in free agency. You brought in your Tur Gross Matos in free agency. But Drake Jackson is the other backup behind Nick Bosa. You're a little bit thin there. If you don't believe in Drake Jackson, first of all, you could cut him as we talked about in our cut candidates video. It's not going to cost you really anything. And do you want a steady rotation of edge rushers to keep Nick Bosa, Leonard Floyd, Yotur Gross Matos, and Trey Hendrickson fresh? We saw Nick Bosa wear down two years ago at the end of the year when he didn't have, when he didn't have a sack the final month. Trey Hendrickson is looking for a new contract. He's 29 years old, highly productive player, 6'4", 270, one of the better premier edge rushers in the NFL. And over his last four years, 13 and a half sacks, 14 sacks, 8 and 17 and a half. The issue, you trade for a player like that, you're probably going to have to give him a contract extension. Now with Leonard Floyd, you did give him solid money for an older player. It's basically a one-year deal with the guaranteed money. Maybe a two-year deal if you want to spread it out. Trey Hendrickson, opposite of Nick Bosa, could that be your edge rusher of the future? Which move do you think the Niners have in store? Let me know down in the comment section. I wanted to explore that because I always like to read the tea leaves and try to get ahead of things before they actually happen. And look, Trey Hendricks and some of these other signings, some of these other additions, they might not ring true. But it's worth talking about because that money, yes, it can be rolled, up, rolled over. It could be used at the NFL trade deadline or it could be used now.